Hello there guys, I am back from my unexpected hiatus and I'm excited to be talking to you again about the Mobile Suit Gundam tabletop RPG that we've been working on. There's been a lot more interest in it lately so I decided to make this video to kind of you know, address some issues that were outstanding. A lot of people have been contributing to the Google document which is awesome. Please keep that up. I love that this is kind of becoming a community project. So I've added a lot of content in the last couple weeks that I'd like to share with you guys. While we still haven't gotten into the meat and potatoes of combat mechanics and a lot of the sort of technical rules of the game, we're still exploring uh, character creation and a lot of the background options that are going to be available to your characters. So as you can see, we have our list of skills filled out. And it looks very similar to a D&D 5e list of skills, but there's certain things missing and certain things added. For instance, you won't find animal handling, religion, or arcana, things that aren't really relevant to the Mobile Suit Gundam universe. And in their place, you'll find things like colony knowledge, repair, and salvage. So let's go through these one by one and talk about the ability scores that are associated with each skill. First, we have the Anti-G Straining Maneuver, which was recommended by a friend of the channel, Flounder, and while it reads like a combat technique, it can be used out of combat as well. It's one of those things where it's the ability to pilot a mobile suit in such a way to prevent the G-forces that impact your body from causing you to black out behind the cockpit of your mobile suit. So this could be used whether you're trying to jet behind an enemy soldier, a GM might ask you for an AGSM skill check, or if you were trying to descend into the atmosphere using a Wave Rider mobile suit like the Zeta Gundam, you know, to execute that technique would require a successful AGSM skill check. Up next we have Athletics, which is like for like D&D 5e. Uh, we use the Strength modifier, which in our case is going to be Will. It's just your ability to accomplish a physical task by imposing your will on that object. Similarly, we have the acrobatic skill check that uses your dexterity and reflexes. This is more about flexibility and finesse, but it can be used in instances like jumping across a cavern, something like that. Now, this is one that I've had a lot of questions about. Colony knowledge, you know, a lot of people thought, well, isn't that just history? Well, not necessarily. Colony knowledge is intricate knowledge of how the colonies actually work. For instance, an earthnoid wouldn't understand how to use the centrifugal artificial gravity that's caused by the rotation of the cylinders. They wouldn't know about things like decompression. And so if one of the players has a question about, hey, can I fire a gun in this room? An earthnoid might not necessarily know the answer, but a spacenoid, if they pass their colony knowledge skill check, they would know exactly what they can get away with inside a colony versus on Earth. Up next is Deception, which again is similar to the D&D 5e Deception. It's just using your Charisma, or in this case your Cunning modifier, how to lie to people and get away with it. Next we have the History Skill Check, which is similar to the D&D 5e History Skill Check. You know, just your ability to recall events that happened in the past, especially if you're in late Universal Century, remembering things that happened in like UC 77 for instance. Next we have Insight, which is similar to D&D 5e, using your mentality or your intelligence modifier, your ability to detect truthfulness in another person when they're talking to you. So this is one where we kind of changed the ability score that's associated with the skill check. Intimidation in D&D 5e is based on your charisma score. Some GMs will allow you to add your strength modifier instead if you're a big burly half-orc. But since we already have the will modifier, which is less about physical strength and more about presence in a room, it makes sense that you'd be able to impose yourself on other people to kind of threaten them into getting your way and coerce them into doing what you wanted them to do. Next we have the investigation check, which is like for like D&D 5e, your ability to gather information or search for clues, search for items on a dead body, things like that, all using your mentality modifier. Now here's another one, land knowledge. This is similar to a survival check, honestly, but you know, because there's not as much of that sort of living off the land, camping, survival aspect in Mobile Suit Gundam, land knowledge is applicable to earthnoids who are capable of living off the land and capable of using the terrain and using the force of gravity against their spacenoid co counterparts that don't really understand how the environment on earth works. 
New type intuition is the only skill that uses our wisdom modifier, in this case, psychic pressure. It really is your ability to kind of see into the mind of another person, to read events from the future. It's kind of like reading tea leaves. It's that esoteric perception that isn't really based in any kind of physical reality. And next we have the traditional perception, just your ability to notice things, um, which is probably five out of the ten checks that you ask your players to make in a D&D 5e game is give me a perception check. That's what this is. Hearing things and seeing things. Simple as that. The repair skill stands in for the medicine check. It's your ability to repair yours or an ally's mobile suit while in the field and to kind of get them back in fighting shape. Um, you couldn't heal armor points doing this, but it's a way of stabilizing uh, a mobile suit so that it doesn't detonate on you, something like that. The salvage skill is similar to the investigation skill. Unfortunately, someone who's using an investigation check is not going to find anything that's particularly useful in a mechanical way. They might find a quest item, you know, but the salvage skill allows you to recycle the parts of a busted up mobile suit to strengthen your own armory or to, you know, save a mobile suit that you could use as a backup later. Sleight of hand is another like for like D&D 5e replicate using your dexterity, your reflexes, your finesse, your ability to take something out of the pocket of somebody else without noticing. Stealth is another skill that we changed the ability modifier that's associated with it because it doesn't really matter how dexterous you are, you can't hide a mobile suit using your reflexes. So in this case, it's more about your cunning, your charm, your sort of intuition. How are you going to hide your mobile suit out in the woods? Or if you're gonna grab a piece of scrap from a broken down ship and hide behind it in space, the ability to hide a mobile suit is more mental than physical. And that's why we're using the cunning ability modifier to represent stealth in this particular game. Now that we've gone through skills, let's talk about character backgrounds. Similar to the player's handbook in D&D 5e, where you have the option to kind of roll for random background options, I've created a few of those in here that are Mobile Suit Gundam themed. Now as a GM, I often prefer for my players to come up with their own backstories and we kind of talk it out and see how things work. I want them to be involved in the character creation process. I don't really like when people kind of just roll for random things on tables. Or if they do, they kind of expand on that. They use that as a foundation that they flesh out and make into a real character backstory. Really bring these people to life. So that said, I didn't want to go too heavy into creating, you know, 30 different background options for characters. I just wanted to give you a few ideas, things that you could use to inspire your characters in the Mobile Suit Gundam tabletop RPG. So up first is the big question. Are you an Earthnoid or a Spacenoid? This is going to inform a lot of the decisions that you have to make later on because opportunities on Earth are few and far between, whereas in space, you know, you could be a wealthy aristocrat, you could be a student, you could be an engineer, you could be all of these different things. On Earth, there's just not a whole lot to do. People on Earth in the Mobile Suit Gundam universe tend to be methodical, super practical, stubborn, and proud, whereas the people of the colonies tend to be a little bit more open-minded, a little bit more fluid in their beliefs, and a little more progressive in, in general. So that said, let's look at a couple of the Earthnoid backgrounds that I've drafted here. Bearing in mind, of course, that the specifics of this are subject to change based on what we determine currency to be worth, you know, what kind of benefits armor and weapons are going to have, it's really going to impact the tool proficiencies and the skill proficiencies that you get by choosing one of these backgrounds. So the first of the Earthnoid backgrounds that we have is the Gorilla Soldier. The character that I had in mind when I was drafting this out in particular was Kiki Rosita from the 8th MS team, but you could also apply this to Xeon soldiers such as Norris Packard, Ron Baral, and Noyan Bitter. The key trait of the Gorilla Soldier is that they're not orthodox military. They can be mercenaries like Kiki was, or you know they're just really struggling to survive. They know how to use the terrain and to use the land against their opponents. If you were comparing them to a D&D 5e background, they'd be somewhere between a folk hero and a criminal because 
they kind of live outside the law, but they're kind of hoisted up by other people that are also downtrodden. And so one of the features that comes with being a gorilla is being plugged into a spy network. Your ability to gather information and to disseminate information on Earth is unparalleled amongst the other Earthnoid backgrounds. So up next we have the officer, someone that comes from a position of privilege, probably one of the old money families, the Earth's elite as Xeon likes to call them, the people that just kind of inherited their position. But they still end up serving in the military and they have a desire to prove themselves a little bit more than say just your average enlistee. If you were comparing this to a D&D 5e background, it would be somewhere between a noble and a soldier, kind of like that knight variant for the noble. That said, the feature that comes with being an officer is to have a retainer. If you're a commissioned officer, you know, you've got some clerical officers that will do research for you, that can gather information that you might need, draft letters. They won't do any fighting for you, but it's nice to have that kind of support network and, you know, you can work out the details with your GM. Up next is a pretty exciting background, is the test pilot. Because the opportunity to make a lot of money, to become famous, to do these types of things on Earth in the Universal Century is so difficult, you have people like Ko Iraki or Chuck Keith who enlist in the military as test pilots. Maybe they have some kind of ideals, but mostly they're just in it for the glory and the opportunity to fly a Gundam or a mobile armor if they're a Xeon pilot. These are the guys that are reckless, brash, they, you know, devil may care attitude. The test pilot is kind of a cross between the entertainer and the folk hero and a criminal and a charlatan. They're like all of those things, all of those kind of rebel without a cause archetypes. And all that said, the feature that comes with being a test pilot is that you are notorious for good or ill. People know you by reputation and everywhere you go you can either get free stuff or get away with crimes because everyone kind of knows who you are and they know what you're about and no one's gonna snitch on you. Finally, the last background option that we have for Earthnoids is the Colony Drop Orphan. It's a sad truth of Earthnoids is that they have suffered something that a Spacenoid can never deal with is if you lost your parents or a parent, even if you just lost other family in the colony drop operations that Xeon pulled, whether it was in Dublin or in uh, Sydney, Australia, those left behind are scarred forever. And so I kind of based this background option on the haunted one from the Curse of Strahd edition uh, from D&D 5e. That said, this background lends itself extremely well to cyber new types. Now it's not exclusive to cyber new types and cyber new types may come from privilege. They may be like Glemmy Toto, but this one is specific to people that have a trauma that they carry around with them. And so that said, the feature that comes with this background is that haunted look, you know, that thousand yard stare that people get and some people might fear you, other people might respect you, but you kind of command a presence when you enter the room. And you can work out the details with your GM about what exactly mechanically that does for your character. So now let's dive into the Spacenoid backgrounds. First up we have the Student, which is the most interesting of the backgrounds that I wrote for this because it's the only background option that has an implicit suggestion that you are younger than any of the other ones. You're not carrying around these battle scars. You are young and idealistic. The only comparison between this and D&D 5e might be the Acolyte because the Acolyte background option kind of suggests that you look up to other people, that you're not, you're not a journeyman adventurer, you're really green, wet behind the ears, whatever you know metaphor you wanna use for it. The student, is the young, idealistic, optimistic character that it's based on Banajer Lynx, if we're being completely honest. And so the student archetype comes with some benefits and some drawbacks. On the one hand, 
they tend to be a little bit more book smart than their adult counterparts. But the flip side of that is that they tend to be very naive, very, very trusting. So you're not likely to see a student that happens to be a infiltrator class, if that makes sense. So the feature that comes with being a student is called book smarts. And if you are unable to recall a piece of information, your character can intuit at least where to find that information, whether it's in an archive somewhere or you know the person that knows that information. This is one of those things that you have to work out with your GM, what you can get away with, to say, look, I don't know this thing, but I know exactly where to find out. And that's a unique gift that the student has that an officer or an orphan wouldn't. Up next we have the Space Noid Soldier, someone who enlisted at a young age and has been in the system for a long time, probably has some battle scars. Someone like Dozel Zabi that, you know, enlisted in the Federation military before Zeon broke away from them. That said, the soldier background probably has a lot of backstory that your GM can mine for later campaign stories that will really affect your character in a deep way past connections, PTSD, things like that. And so the feature that comes with being a soldier is whatever rank you finished out with. Again, this is something that you would have to work out with your GM, but by having rank, you can assert yourself over younger members of the military service that you served with. So if you were a Dozel Zabi character, you know, you could impose your will on other Xeon members. If you were, say, Bright Noah, you could order around a bunch of Federation troops. Up next, we have another very interesting background option, the Junker Scavenger. This is inspired by Judo Ashta from Double Zeta Gundam. This is the guy that lives out in the colonies that doesn't have a dime to his name and is just struggling to get by, but has the skills to fly a mobile suit, to build a mobile suit from scratch if he wanted to. Kelly from uh, 0083 and building the Valwalo mobile armor, that's that sort of character that isn't really affiliated with one army or another. They're kind of, they can be a mercenary or they might have some deeper ideals that they hold close, but they're not, they're not a soldier or they're no longer a soldier if that. These people specialize in making beautiful things out of broken things, and I think that that's what's kind of most interesting to me about them. If we were comparing them to a D&D 5e background, it would kind of be a cross between the folk hero and the criminal, kind of like the space noid version of the gorilla. And although they don't know necessarily terrain knowledge, they have colony knowledge. And so all of that said, the feature that comes with being a junker is that People know who you are if they are also poor and downtrodden. When you're traveling the streets of a colony, you know, the poorer districts, people are going to offer you food and shelter that they wouldn't offer to a wealthy officer of the Xeon military. And finally, we have the aristocrat. I was heavily inspired by Glemmy Toto and Maneva Zabi when I was drafting this character background. These are the people that were born into a position of privilege. They know their manners, they are culturally educated, they are well educated in history, and their life experience is very different from a student or a soldier or a junker or a gorilla. You know, these are people that come from an entirely different world. And while they may have had a whole bunch of privilege, their social skills maybe aren't exactly all there. If you remember in Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn, there was that unique moment where Maneva Zabi is baffled by the idea of eating and walking at the same time. That is what went into this background option. Now all that said, having a whole lot of money doesn't necessarily make you happy and it doesn't make you a good mobile suit pilot. So this background is one of those complex ones to juggle and I think that people could have a lot of fun with it. And so the feature that comes with being an aristocrat in the mobile suit Gundam RPG is like for like taken straight out of the noble background of D&D 5e. People that are also from noble birth will recognize you as aristocracy and will treat you as such people that are people that are less fortunate might not be so friendly to you unless there's law enforcement around 
So that's it. We have some skills that you can invest your ability scores into. We have some character backgrounds that can help inspire your own character's backstory. And hopefully in the next couple of weeks we can get into more of the core mechanics of the game and hopefully start alpha testing soon. As always, I will put a link in the description to the complete current Google document of the rulebook. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I will catch you later. Hey guys, if you like that video, please like, share, and subscribe. If you really like the video, check out my merch available on Society6 and DMs Guild. Links below in the description. New products added every week. Thanks. Catch you later.